All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Nick and Joe Show. I'm Joe, he's Nick, and you know what we just realized during the break? This is for those of you who are listening to the live show. If you're listening to the podcast, it's already like a week late. Sorry, guys. But anyway, sorry for those to those of you who are listening to the live show as well. We just remembered that it is St. Patrick's Day today, and we have not been playing any music. And I was kind of excited by the uh, re intro music because that, that used to be the theme song for the Western television series, The High Chaparral, and uh, one of my favorite series. I love Westerns. But uh, yeah, Nick pointed out, I said, uh, I said, Nick, it's the High Chaparral. And he said, oh, we forgot. It's, 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 uh, we haven't played any Irish music and it's uh, St. Patrick's Day. So anyway, what can I say except for sorry to our Irish listeners, sorry to all our listeners in Ireland, both the Irish Republic and Northern Ireland, because we do not distinguish between the two. At least we don't distinguish between the two on that level. No, that's true. And as the Irish would say, there's an old Irish uh, farewell. We're a little early for a farewell, but I'll say it anyway. May it be half an hour in heaven before the devil knows you're dead. Anyway. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving, the, you know what? The Irish are amazing people. They really are. And I want to let AJ know in the chat room, I see he's just steaming away in the chat room, that it uh, we're hoping next week to do a show on, uh, do a segment on bilingualism in the federal government. Uh, because this is, uh, I tackled a lot of this when I was first on the air in, in Ottawa. Uh, there was, uh, that seemed to be the topic du jour and got me into a little bit of trouble a couple of times. But uh, the um, idea that there's this weight, uh, weighted, What's the way I want to describe this now? Things are weighted towards those who are better in French than they are in English and how discriminatory that is. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now. We have something else that's even more serious to talk about. But, uh, you know, I share your I share your frustration, AJ, because believe me, it's enough to make, uh, make a man pull his hair out when you start thinking about the amount of money they waste on that topic alone. Uh, one of the other things, Joseph, that I thought was worth talking about that's, like I said, far more serious, everybody's been so wrapped up in COVID um, that they forget what the big deal was in the country before COVID came along. And that, of course, was the fentanyl crisis, which I think is a far more serious health care uh, or health issue than COVID is. And yet no one is even whispering, never mind talking, they're not even whispering about the ongoing fentanyl uh, crisis. And, and People are dying. And opioid addictions. Yes, opioid addictions. I'm include that's kind of a right. fentanyl. When I use the word phrase fentanyl, I'm including all of that in it. Right. The the drug problem we have, the serious, you know, the hard, real hardcore drugs that kill people. Right. Cause them to overdose. And they're just being stepped over in the rush to get everybody to get their mask on. And I think it's absolutely outrageous. Well, here's a, a, a really interesting angle on that, Nick, and that is that, you know, it, we we have been talking about the op opioid um, epidemic to a degree. Uh, and the other thing we've talked about, or not you and I, we, but just generally the media has talked a little bit about and that has been the uh the the mental health problems that we're seeing manifest themselves recently particularly in in children and and, and teenagers young adults uh and and what i find really astonishing is the automatic uh attribution of these conditions increased suicidal thinking self-harm, all kinds of, of mental illnesses, all kinds of psychological and emotional disorders uh, in higher numbers than we've probably ever seen. And immediately the default position is that this is because kids are not in school due to the COVID lockdowns and we have to get them back into school. We have to get them back into a routine because otherwise there's... Uh, you know, we're, we're going to t continue to have uh, emotional deterioration, mental health deterioration. 
and I don't dismiss that. I don't dismiss that at all. But I ask myself, is that really the main factor or is a significant contributing factor to the hopelessness that feeds the kind of addiction that you're referring to, that feeds the growth in uh, mental disorders, emotional disorders, that feeds the growth in teen suicide. What about the fact that our so many of our governments now in the Western world are convinced and are convincing their populations, particularly the youth, when we talk about teachers in public schools, etc., that the world is on the verge of a catastrophic of a catastrophe due to climate change. That, you know... Prince Philip, no smaller a figure than Prince Philip himself, talking about how we've reached a tipping point and, you know, the world as we know it could very well come to an end within 12 years if we don't stop driving our cars and using straw, plastic straws with our uh, water drink or our fountain drink in, in the uh, local restaurant, etc., 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 that we are on the verge of destroying our planet. And I ask myself, am I truly the only person that listens to that kind of rhetoric coming out from uh, leaders, from teachers, from uh, people who really don't know the subject at all, you know, opinion makers, uh, celebrities, etc.? Am I the only person that's saying, you know, maybe that has a significant impact on people's emotional state, younger people's emotional state as well? You know, Greta Thun Thunberg is one angry young lady. Now, I've heard said that she was somewhere on the autism spectrum, so maybe that contributes to the way she comes across. I don't know whether that's true or not, by the way, but if it is true, I could see that that would contribute to the way that she uh, portrays herself, the way she conducts herself. But still, she's an angry young lady. And there are an awful lot of angry young people out there. All you have to do is go back and look at the uh, uh, Extinction Revolution or whatever they called it, right? Re Extinction Rebellion. Uh, that, yeah. I mean, these are young people who truly believe that if you and I don't stop driving our cars, Nick, or if our listeners out there don't stop driving their cars, don't stop using plastic bags when they go shopping, that the human race is going to be extinct in a dozen, maybe two dozen years at the at the at the the longest. Does anyone is anyone surprised when people, when younger people in particular? hear this kind of thing day in and day out, see it on TV, hear it repeated by celebrities that they look up to who really don't know the subject matter they're talking about, hear it from their their ideological indoctrinators, <coughs> I mean school teachers, <laughs> day in and day out of the classroom. You know, I'm asking myself, surely, surely that is you know, basically targeting young people, children, with that kind of messaging surely has to contribute to the kinds of disorders that we see manifesting themselves in huge and greater numbers today. And surely we you're... have to ask ourselves, is this not a form of child abuse also? I think what you're describing is that what a sailor would call a perfect storm where you have all these conditions in and of themselves separately aren't that big a deal, but when they all merge at the same point at the same time, it's catastrophe. Because, look, if you're a 16-year-old today, what have you got to look forward to? If you believe everything you're told, you're going to die of some dread virus if you don't put a rag over your face. If, you you know, your, your planet's going to be burnt to a crisp in 12 years... You know, so that would make you 12, 20, what, 28? Uh, so by the time, before you're 30, the planet's going to be nothing but a smoking ball where the, where the planet used to be. 
I mean, you know, there's there's uh, pollution problems, there's social problems, there's all these problems, and who's holding out a branch, uh, you know, a, a ray of hope? Where because people require hope to live. Um, there's a very famous experiment that you did on lab rats, and they put lab rats in a bucket half full of water, and they let them swim around till they drowned. Then they put another set of lab rats in, and before they drowned, they put a stick in so they could climb out. And they took those lab rats, the ones that had survived, and put them in the bucket and left them in there till they drowned, but it took three times longer for them to drown because they, within the rat, they had planted the seed of hope that something might come along to save them. So humanity, as a, as a, as a group, needs hope. And yet, if I'm 16, 17 years old today, and I don't have the historical context to understand what's going on around me, that the world has seen this kind of nonsense before in many different, you know, varieties, um, there's not many bright spots in, this, in, in the clouds above. It's all dark, and it's all, you know, doom and gloom. And eventually, add drugs to the mix and, and all that stuff, and... Not a wonder your suicide rate goes up. Yeah, you know, well, where else are you going to get hopeful messaging except from the Nick and Joe show? And speaking about yeah. hope, I think it's worthwhile noting that according to the Weather Network, Network, North America has just had its coldest February since 1994. <laughs> now... What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And I, I just want to emphasize that when I make this observation, I'm going to qualify it by saying average temperature means nothing. Because I say the same thing when I hear about average temperature when they're talking about global warming. Average temperature means nothing. It's a, there's, there's, it's a nothing number that they throw out there for a lot of different reasons. And and by the way, if, if you if you want to listen to a really good discussion about the temperature data, go to thinkradio.ca and go to Exploratory Journeys and listen to the latest podcast uh, by Tom Harris interviewing Dr. John McLean from Australia, who has just complete, recently completed uh, a, a PhD thesis on the subject of the data that goes into calculating things like global average temperature. And you, I think you'd be shocked by, by a lot of the things that he discovered in analyzing this, this data. So it's a great t opportunity for you to be informed about it uh, and listen to the rest of his podcasts that are online as well there. Thinkradio.ca, select Exploratory Journeys with Tom Harris. And, uh, and and listening because uh, very informative, very important um, uh, information there. But going back to this idea of average temperature, um, it's it's really not a meaningful thing. So when I read that the Weather Network has just made the observation that North America has just had its coldest average temperature since February 1994, I don't I really don't care about the number. How they've arrived at it, I don't care. What I find the most interesting is nobody's reporting it. You would think that given the breathless reporting that, you know, 2020 was the highest average temperature on the planet, statistics say, that you would think that a, there would be a story somewhere in the mainstream media that says... You know what? North America has just experienced its coldest February since 1984. Can I say that a little bit more?